Wild Eagle at Dollywood was America's first Bolger and Mabillard wing coaster. However, this wing coaster is way different than the other ones out there. While most wing coasters focus on floaty elements and near misses, Wild Eagle is a layout more reminiscent of a traditional B&M floorless or inverted coaster. And is that a good thing? Find out in this review of Wild Eagle. Bolger and Mabillard introduced their wing coaster a decade ago, and their first installation was Raptor at Gardaland in 2011. And this has been one of their most popular models ever since. Three more were built for the 2012 season alone, and the first to open in the United States was Wild Eagle. This immediately became one of Dollywood's most iconic attractions, and it's still one of their most popular rides, if not their most popular one. Perched atop a wooded hill in the center of the park, Wild Eagle looks fantastic. The ride is a commanding presence no matter where you are in the park. You can see that giant 210 foot or 64 meter tall lift hill from most places in Dollywood, and you can hear the coaster roaring through the foreign versions. The bright blue track looks nice against the sky, but the presentation does not stop there. The entrance plaza is a massive 4 ton eagle statue with a 42 foot or 13 meter tall wingspan. I like the metallic touch on it too. It's one of the most picturesque shots at all of Dollywood. I also love what B&M did with the trains. They are designed to look like eagles. The seats are the eagle's wings, and each row is this beautifully designed detailed eagle head hugging the track. They are some of the best looking trains out there. They're my favorite of any wing coaster. The Q Lion Station don't have much to look at, but Dolly Parton recorded a custom song for the ride that you can hear while you wait. Although you probably won't have to wait too long anyway. This ride is typically no more than a 15 to 20 minute wait. This is probably Dollywood's highest capacity coaster. It always seems to run two trains, each seating up to 24 riders and the crew working the ride checks the restraints pretty darn quickly. The next train is usually ready to go right after the previous one hits that final brake run. When you reach the merge point, you can either go left or right. I prefer the view if you go up the right staircase, which equates to the left side of the train, but the ride feels identical whether you're on the right or left side of the train. As for seat selection, the back is my go-to spot in Wild Eagle. This ride has an underrated drop and you experience it at its fullest extent in that back row. I also prefer to ride on the inside, which I think is the less popular seat. Wild Eagle tracks quite smoothly, but I find the outside seat to be a little bouncier, which is the case with most wing coasters. I like riding on the inside because it is smoother, and I still get the great visuals. The restraints used to be the biggest issue with this ride. Wild Eagle had the first generation B&M vests. In general, I liked these restraints. They eliminated any chance of headbanging and the soft vests hug against your body. However, the top of the vest could dig into your collarbone because they had no give. In my recent visits, I noticed that the vests have been modified to have some slack like the newer ones that B&M have used. This is a major improvement in my opinion because it eliminates any discomfort and makes the hang time on the inversions even more potent. Another positive with these restraints is that they make it one of the most accommodating B&Ms out there. Not only does it seem to be friendlier with larger guests, but it also is one of the lowest height restrictions on any B&M at just 50 inches. That allows younger guests to ride this coaster a year or two earlier, which is really nice. Most B&Ms have a 54 inch height requirement. Once dispatched, you turn out of the station and you ascend the massive lift hill. This is a really steep lift and it starts right up against the hillside. At the top, you get a breathtaking view of Dollywood and the nearby Smoky Mountains. It is one of my favorite views atop any coaster. But that beauty quickly turns into thrills as you descend down the 135 foot or 41 meter tall drop. Now this drop is significantly shorter than the lift hill because the main layout takes place atop the hill, whereas you load at the base of the hill. However, it's one of the best drops on any B&M looper. Rather than having a wing over drop like the ladder wing coasters or a twisting drop like their usual loopers, Wild Eagle is a straight drop more reminiscent of a B&M Hyper. Or if you want a comparison to another Hershen Park, the first drop on Wildfire. And it delivers some really nice and sustained floater airtime if you're in the back on Wild Eagle's drop. It's the best part of the ride without a doubt. The rest of the layout has similarities to other B&M loopers. Just look at the sequencing. You then navigate four consecutive inversions in a familiar order. You have a vertical loop, 
followed by a zero G roll, an Immelman, a corkscrew, and then some final helixes. No other wing coaster is a layout quite like this. That large vertical loop is decently forceful, but I find the positive G's entering and exiting the element even stronger. They're deceptively forceful, and I start to gray out slightly in both spots. The second inversion is a very floaty zero G roll. I love how you slowly rotate as you gracefully levitate out of your seat. This type of inversion works really well on a wing coaster with those wide trains. The third inversion is an Immelman. You have some positive G's ascending the element, but the flip over the top is pretty tame. This is how I feel with a lot of B&M Immelmans, so it's not an issue specific to Wild Eagle. The final inversion is a long and drawn out corkscrew. Rather than whipping you through it like the old school B&M loopers, this corkscrew is sustained hang time as you crawl through it. It may have more hang time than the Zero G roll, which is quite the accomplishment. Wild Eagle then climbs up a camelback that gives a tiny bit of floater airtime. You then navigate this figure eight finale. The first half of the figure eight is pretty uneventful, but the second half has some nice positive G's as you dip downwards through the element. You then hit the brake run, which is sloped pretty steeply downhill. You then accelerate around one final turn, faster than you may expect, before hitting the final brakes. This ends the 3,127 foot or 953 meter long coaster. So what would I rate Wild Eagle? I would give America's first wing coaster a 7.5 out of 10. Wild Eagle is a weird wing coaster. It rides so much differently, but I think it does a lot well. That first drop is the standout moment, offering great airtime. But you also have a mix of positive G's and hang time peppered throughout the layout. The ride also offers some nice visuals because of its location atop that wooded hillside, and it's very smooth and super rideable. The ride isn't the most intense one in the world, but it's a really nice fit for Dollywood, and you may never see another wing coaster with a layout quite like this one. I definitely wish the ride had more near misses to utilize that riding position more, but it's still a fun experience. I think Wild Eagle is towards the middle of the pack of the B&M wing coasters, and I seem to appreciate the ride more and more each visit. So those are my thoughts on Wild Eagle at Dollywood. What are your thoughts on the country's original B&M wing coaster? Do you like how different the layout is? Or do you prefer the more typical B&M wing coaster you can find elsewhere? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.